What's up guys? Another brand new box by Yugos. So we're looking at the Yugos AM8 Pro. Now let me start off by saying that Yugos is probably one of the only Android streaming manufacturers that actually still cares about producing newer and more powerful spec Android TV boxes. They're constantly launching newer and more powerful boxes with impressive features and specs that you don't really find in other brands. It's impressive that they do manage to squeeze so much into one box. So this is the latest model, Yugos AM8 Pro. I did previously review the AM8, well this is the Pro version and it's souped up, it's got much better specifications and we're gonna quickly go through them right now. So the box is powered by the S928XJ Pentacore clocked at two gigahertz. For graphics, you have the Mali G57. We've got eight gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. We've got micro SD expansion up to 32 gigs, Wi-Fi 6, gigabit LAN, Bluetooth 5.3. You've got SPDIF, USB 3, USB-C. This is running full Android version 11. You've got HDMI version 2.1a. This supports up to 8K resolution at 60 frames per second. You've also got support for AV1, VP9 codecs, and this supports Dolby Audio with 5.1 and 7.1 pass-through. Quickly show you what you get inside the box. So we have a user manual. We've got a Type-C power brick a Type-C to Type-C charging cable, an HDMI cable, and you can see all of these cables are actually Yugos branded. Now, now you've got a hybrid remote control, it's Bluetooth and infrared, you've got a built-in microphone so you can run some voice searches. It's powered by two AAA batteries which are not included in the box. And last but certainly not least, the TV box itself. All right, so the box itself is made completely from metal with a Yugos logo. There is a power indicator light in the middle. You've got infrared on the front for the remote control. On the side, we've got micro SD card slot, three USB 3 ports. If we keep going, we've got Type-C power socket, Type-C OTG port, HDMI 2.1a, gigabit LAN, SPDIF, and a 3.5 AUX port. There are two external Wi-Fi antennas. At the bottom, you can see we've got two holes, one for recovery and one for mask ROM. So that is pretty much all your ports. And a quick look at the bottom of the box, you can see we've got some ventilation there. It's a completely metal build, a really nice premium quality box. Um, I can't wait to see how this one performs. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this hooked up to my TV and capture card, and we're gonna find out exactly what this can do. I'll be right back. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and you can see the results on screen on exactly how long it took to boot up from a cold start. And here is the home screen. We have full Android desktop slash tablet layout. It's completely customizable, just like a tablet. You can navigate with a remote or mouse. And it's also nice to see that you do have your navigation status menu at the bottom, which you can bring up by swiping from the bottom with a mouse. Now, if we head over to the main system settings, let's go to device preferences and check out the system storage info. You will see that this box has 64 gigs of internal storage from which you have 57 gigs free to use. If we go back and have a quick look in about, you will see that we are indeed running Android version 11 and you can see the information for the kernel and build numbers, etc. Now other features to mention under inputs and devices, we have HDMI CEC with a whole bunch of settings that you can play around with. Now, if we go back, you've got keyboard autofill button manager and menu button customizer. So you can actually customize that menu button to do different actions, which is quite useful. If you connect a mouse, you can also customize some of the mouse options like pointer speed, which is again, very useful. You can also tweak the USB port. So it is set to super speed by default, but you also have the option to drop the speed down and it gives you an explanation why you would want to do this. Now under display and sound, if we check out the resolution, you can see that it has automatically detected 4K 60. And under color, you can see color mode, HDR policy, adaptive, but you can switch to always Dolby Vision. I'm gonna leave it on the default, which is adaptive. Now this box also features automatic frame rate, which is off by default, but you can switch this on and you've got two options going forward. Now under panels and interface, we've got system bars, which I've already mentioned. So you can show the status bar, you can hide the status bar and hide the navigation. You can allow swipes for showing. So you just swipe up to bring up the bars when you need it. Hardware monitor allows you to bring up an overlay where you can choose any of these metrics and it will allow you to monitor these in real time. And you can select 
any of these options and you can see the overlay in the top left. You've actually got two home screens included. The one that I've shown you already, that's the tablet version, the tablet desktop layout, that's the default, but you've also got U-Launcher and I want to show you what that looks like. So this is U-Launcher, it's a minimalistic view. You've got a plus sign there so you can just basically select your favorite apps and they will immediately appear like so. And there is also an app drawer. When you press it, it will show you all your apps. So that's the home screen, but I like Launcher 3, so I'm going to revert back to Launcher 3. Now you've got something called Voice Input Applications, where you can select your favorite search provider. And of course, I am going to switch that to Google. Now under Power, you've got a number of customization options. You can actually customize the power indicator on the TV box itself. So CPU activity is currently green. You can change that to any color you like there. And you've got a few other options that you can tweak and play around with. We've got screen saver, energy saver, you've got power key definition as well, currently set to sleep, but you can choose other options if you want to. And right at the bottom, you can see maximum performance mode, which I am going to switch on. So it will lock the CPU and GPU clock speeds at its highest for the best performance. Now you've also got super user access, so you can easily root this box if you need to by just flicking this switch. Now under additional settings, that will bring you to the full Android desktop style settings. So that is basically all your settings. And, and as usual, Yugos will give you so many customization options. Um, no other TV box gives you this much. So that's where Yugos is leading. All right, so now quick look at the complete system apps. These are your default apps. This is what you get as standard. I have not installed anything yet. So quite a few apps are missing. Um, there's no YouTube, there's no Netflix. So you can go ahead, sign into the Play Store and download your favorite apps, which I'm about to do right now. Now, unfortunately, Disney Plus and Netflix were not available to download from the Play Store, but I was able to sideload them directly from a USB drive. So no issues there. Okay, so the first app we need to test is screen mirroring. And this box appears to support both Miracast, which is Android screen mirroring. And we also have Air Screen, which is iOS screen mirroring. So starting off with Miracast, if we open it up. And I used a couple of devices to try and connect to the Miracast, but unfortunately, I was not able to do this. And yes, I did make sure I was on the same Wi-Fi network on all three devices that I tested. So on all three devices, I was unable to connect to Miracast. So Miracast, for some strange reason, does not work on this box. Now I'm gonna try out AirScreen, which is screen mirroring for iOS devices. I am trying to connect, and any second now, we should see my screen mirrored. So yes, screen mirroring on iOS is working absolutely fine. And it's actually working pretty fast as well. So minimal lag, working great. Screen mirroring for iOS, working fine on my iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, so the next test is 4K video samples from a USB drive. And I will be doing this using VLC Media Player, which I downloaded from the Play Store. And we're gonna start off with the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demos. So the first clip is 160 megabits per second. And as expected, it's playing back super smooth with no issues. So let's go back and test out the slightly higher 180 megabits per second file. And again, the playback is really nice, super smooth, I can't fault it. Now the real test, which not every box passes, but this one should, considering the processor speed, 400 megabits per second. You can see it's playing back smooth, guys, no issues here. So thereafter, I tested some 4K60 samples with various HDR formats, and they all played back smooth. Just to see what happens, I also tested an AV1 sample, and as you can see, it's playing back fine, so AV1 Kodak is also supported. So that was 4K videos from USB. Now let's move on to the 4K YouTube test. You can see maximum resolution supported in YouTube is 4K60 with HDR. So let's go ahead and play a few samples. Doesn't get to you. My family's been fighting them for centuries. The front door. Yeah! It was against an army. Yeah! 
You did better. And transportation of stolen property. But I'm here to offer you a deal. We need you to steal something. Okay, so next up, Netflix. Now, Netflix was not available to download from the Play Store, but I was able to sideload an older version from USB. Um, I have managed to sign in and it does work fine, although it is limited to SD quality. So SD quality streaming only on Netflix. And I do also like to confirm Amazon Prime Video also supports SD quality streaming max. I also tried sideloading Disney Plus. I downloaded it from the App Toy TV store and unfortunately I'm getting errors every time I open the app. So I haven't been able to test Disney Plus on this box. All right, so now it's time for a quick gaming test, starting off with Asphalt 8. Considering we have quite a powerful chipset, let's test out some emulation games starting off with PSP. Now, for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level 3. And here is ADA64 where you can check out the system information. Over here you can see the system CPU information with the clock speeds. And I do want to confirm you've got the Mali G57 for graphics. Android version is 11 and it does not come rooted as standard. And that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 391 and multi core score of 730. And in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved 225k. So let's see how that compares with the others. And here is my Android TV box performance chart for 2024, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And the ranking is based on Antutu benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see the new Yugos AM8 Pro takes position five with a benchmark score of 225K. And I've also given this box an overall rating of four out of five. So from this chart, you can see both the benchmark scores and my overall rating out of five. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it, guys. That was the new Yugos AM8 Pro. And here are my thoughts. This new Pro version comes with a few upgrades and shares some of the same positives as the previous non-Pro version. Expect a slightly more powerful performance. You have double the RAM and double the storage. This can stream 4K on YouTube and also third-party apps. You can also play back 4K movies from a USB drive. You have Wi-Fi 6 and Gigabit LAN. So you can see that long list of positives, but we do have a few caveats to consider. Netflix has to be sideloaded as it was not available to download from the Play Store and limited to SD quality. Amazon Prime Video also limited to SD quality. Disney Plus not available and you can't sideload it either, it doesn't work. 
And finally, Miracast did not work for me. I tested it with a number of different Android phones. Now, I do appreciate Ugos as a brand, as they are one of the better streaming box companies that always push new specs, new technology into their boxes. This is quite an expensive box, entering close to Nvidia Shield price range. And for a little more money, you could get your hands on an NVIDIA Shield TV instead, which offers better 4K streaming capabilities across the board. So bottom line, a pretty advanced box offering a great user experience, but does lack in some areas. That's all for this video. If you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.